What are these? Oof, these are day one data inventory list of a customer. And I need to figure out all these data assets to do some advanced analytics and AI over the data. So I'm just messed up here. And there's much more. Look at that. That's over here. Ouch. You don't need to code and do all this stuff. No I need cannot for feed all these data assets to chat GPT and start chatting. They're terabyte of data. It's impossible. Still, you can do chatting for even advanced, advanced analytics and ML on your data without necessarily you coding chatting. or figuring out all this stuff. Yeah. Okay, Mr. MG solution. I'm going to train a model to forecast X on my data and do it. Done. Exactly. That's one simple way of chatting and you can do this too. Quit and do it. Okay, then let's go. Hello everyone, this is MG and welcome to another video. We previously recorded multiple videos about how you can connect ChatGPT with your data, specifically tabular data like SQL database, and start chatting with your tabular data without you necessarily writing down any SQL query. So our chat or natural language, we're directly able to convert them to a SQL query without us generating any single line of code. But let's go one step further, which in this video, we're gonna see how we can even do analytics over our data but without any coding. Let's say you want to do some specific processing on your data using Python or SQL, or you want to plot or visualize your data, or you would like to train a model to forecast something within your data, you can still do all these with just chatting without you necessarily writing any code. And of course, we're gonna leverage GPT like GPT-4 to be able to understand our input as a language, generate the codes, and with the wrap solution, we can see how we can execute the code at the same time. That means we have an end-to-end -end solution. We just sat, we just chat, and everything on backend will be generated and executed for me, and we can just see the results and enjoy. Then, let's check it out. Before we start, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell icon so you will get notified for the next video Thank all right you. welcome back everyone so for this video we're going to actually implement a demo an application that it can do data analytics for us so instead of you going to ChatGPT and ask your question to let ChatGPT generate some codes and then copy and paste the, all the codes to your server and execute them how about this let's say you're going to have an application that you ask your question, for example, show me revenue by product in ascending order. And not only it will give you the code generated by ChatGPT, it will also execute at the same time and show you the results. Not just even SQL, which is one way to do that, as you can see, the first option is SQL Query Writing Assistant. The second option is you can have this assistant do data analysis for you. So if I scroll down, here's a quick snapshot of what you can do in data analysis for example i'm going to type show me daily revenue in 2016 per region it will generate that sort of python code for me and when i say show it will actually visualize that in an interactive plot for me so think about this think about this there's a system for you that it will generate the code and you can execute at the same time over this application then what is this application this is an streamlit application i'm going to actually post the link of the github repo that hosts this application to my discord channel in the reference section so check that out and i will show you how you can deploy it on your own place so before we deploy it, let's try to understand a little bit how this demo and cool thing works you can see here i have two dot pi codes the first app.py is actually the main code that designed this ui and uh, receive the settings from you for example you have to add your azure open ai key your azure open AI endpoint you have to tell where is your open ai to be able to use it here for this demo and if you want to connect to your sql server to ask these question and start doing analysis then you have to add your sql server credentials so all these configurations and giving you the placeholders are mainly defined here in this app.py and not only that you can see some prompts that how this assistant is doing that magic for you. So basically, we are telling to ChatGPT that you are an assistant to, to help you do some analysis over the SQL database. 
And what we're going to do, we are going to actually give the schema of our data or SQL database to this prompt. So for example, if the customer asks, if a user asks, what is the revenue for 2019? At the same time, we give more info about our schema of the tables we have to chat GPT to. So I will say, based on this schema that I have, then answer questions of the customer. And that's how it is able to generate those queries for me. Here are some few short examples. For example, sorry, these are the ones actually going to be showing the UI as a questions example that are going to use them. So, and the rest of that is just having some, let's say, text inputs, some buttons that you can execute them. So this is like the main orchestrator of the UI part with some prompts and with some UI definitions. But the other main code, which is analyze.py, this is the one actually doing the, the main part of the magic. So what this code will do, it will actually try to call open AI, generate an, um, a code based on your question that you're going to ask, and then execute that code, whether it is SQL on your database or whether it's Python on your server, to figure out what's going to be the final outcome to answer your question. So if I do Control F and just type execute, there you go. This is the part that will execute that query generated by ChatGPT. So that's the trick here. Instead of you copy and paste the codes and run them, this is going to be on fly because of this definition. Uh, even more, I think this is just for the SQL part, even if it's Python, it will wrap that generated code if it's flagged as Python and execute it as a Python code for you as well. So in order to run this, if I go back to the repo, you have this .py codes that I just mentioned you. The requirement.txt, these are the packages you need to install to run this demo. And lastly, the part that has a sample SQLite data. So if you want to connect your SQL database, you can. But if you want to test this demo, here's a sample database provided for you. You can give it a try. So what they have done, they have already implemented this solution over an Azure Web App. So if you click on this link, it will launch that Istanbul app for you. So you can start playing with it. Or you can run this in your local machine, which I'm going to show you how. Or you can have it further customized and then deploy on your own Azure Web App to create your own application. You can change this customization. Again, think about this repo as an accelerator, as a start. You can customize the UI part, customize the code generator, generation, and connect it to your SQL database, and then host it on your own web app. So in order to run it on your own machine, you just need to download all these files plus that data. I want to use it as a test, and I will show you quickly where I downloaded it. There you go. You can see I have a folder created and automated analytics. I have those .py codes, requirements, and I have also the database. Now, then what I did, I opened my VS Code, and you can see here I am already under the same directory, which is in my automated analytics that I have everything there. I just quickly did pip install requirement.txt, so I installed all these packages. And for running this app, you need to make sure Stimulit is installed. It is already inside the requirements. And if I just say Streamlit run app.py, which is this app.py big download from repo, it will start launching this application. Pretty simple in a local browser that I have in my local server, which is my laptop that I'm recording this video. There you go. It is launching it for me. And now I should be able to see the same UI that we had in Azure Web App that they implemented the demo. There you go. It's already there. Now we have two applications a SQL query assistant or analysis assistant. So let's go with the first one. My model is GPT, chat GPT. I don't have access to GPT-4 myself. And I wanna, when I also do, when this application write the codes and execute it for me, I wanna make sure it doesn't just give me the final answer. It show me the code that it ran to get, to come up with that answer. And also I want to see what is the prompt VK chat GPT to come up with that answer for better visibility. But before I ask the first question, I need to go to the settings. Rather, you connect it to your own SQL server, or if you can just go with the SQLite that comes with this package that we just downloaded, data. So if you don't add anything, it will use the default one. Now, I need to replace these with the values that I have from my Azure OpenAI. You can just simply go to your Azure OpenAI service, copy the endpoint from the UI portal, and then paste the key. That's it. OK, I just added mine. And I am good to go with clicking on Submit. Now I am ready 
to start asking some questions and here are some default questions that you can ask but you can always modify this text box and add yours let's say show me revenue by product in ascending order i click on submit so this is the question we're asking there you go the code generated by chat gpt and here's the final outcome but how chat gpt knew that i have these columns and how it generated the code i just gave one question here's the trick the prompt is not just your question this is the prompt we gave to the chat GPT. You can see here that backend code, the analyze.py stuff that I showed you with app.py, they are sending the schema of your table as well with all the info that I have. And then finally your question gonna be asked. There you go. So we are saying that, hey, this is the system knows and this is what user ask and give the answer. So that's how it knows what's gonna be the query. So this is the trick. We are not bringing any table to ChatGPT. You cannot fit your table to ChatGPT. There's a token limit. We just give the scheme on the definition of your table and we grab code out of ChatGPT and ChatGPT doesn't execute anything for us. It's a, it's just a large language model. That's it. Let's go with another example. Um, what is this one? Find quarterly orders by product. First column is product name, then year. Okay, that one is a little bit more complex. Let's see how it's going to work. The amount is order amount after discount i'm quite honest not sure if i understand the question properly but let's see if it can understand there you go yeah this one is a was a little bit more complex query and not only it generated the answer for me but also it provided explanations this is just think about it if i didn't have this solution i had to even i had a little bit of challenge to figure out the question first and I had to code, even if I'm such a very expert SQL query, assuming so, it's still gonna take me like a couple of minutes, I would say, at least. At least, if I do remember all this syntax properly, if I do not add any extra or less character and run it ex properly, it's still gonna put some time, but I think we did it in just several seconds. Okay, that's enough for the writing assistant. Let's try the new one, the second one, which is actually more interesting, data analysis assistant. For doing so, oh, by the way, before I forget, I, I created a dedicated video to how to connect your SQL database to ChatGPT and chat with your SQL databases. So I wanna add that video to the top right of the screen and also in the video description, check that out. It is very similar to what we just tested, but I have provided more explanation there how that, the logic works on the backend. But this one is a little bit new, doing data analysis. So here are some examples for this part. For example, show me, daily revenue trend in 2016 per region and when I say show me that means I'm going to visualize something so I'm just waiting this is going to be a Python code that's going to get executed so again the code are generated with chat GPT and execution is happening on my server there you go it is actually doing chain of thoughts step by step thought one is generating the data frame with this code second visualizing that I can use plotly to visualize and visualize it for me this is this is amazing and that there was an image that i think it couldn't show something anyways um there are much more examples here i'm not going to run all of them but to save the time you can give it a try but i think that the the most complex one was this one let me click on that again oops there you go predicting monthly revenue for next six months starting from blah 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 so do not use profit. So we are going to ask this solution to train a machine learning model. Again, I'm not going to code and I'm going to click on submit. And let's see how, how long it's going to take to train a machine learning model that do a prediction for me for revenue for the table that I have. And um, yeah, let's see how it goes. There you go. So thought one, to predict monthly revenue, we need to have a circle data. Okay, so it is thinking about what it needs to train a machine learning model. So it generated the uh, code and interestingly, it figured out that ChatGPT code has an issue and this is the error. So it doesn't stop, you see it's still running. So it realized that, oh, my code got an error and I know how to fix it, I need to modify this. So it goes back again, write the code again, and again, it might come up with some errors. So let's see, I'm actually curious to know, uh, is it going to fix all the errors and run it again and again, or it's gonna be stuck forever? And if I go back to my terminal that I just run this machine, you can see it is still working in the terminal part, 
and yeah so i'm just waiting for what's going to be action thought one and what's going to be thought two let's see okay it figured out something to modify let's see again the error is there so three times almost it has been trying to fix an error but it still keep getting failed so I s let's see how it gonna goes interesting so it is stuck it says that oh because of the limit of opening that's actually a limitation on my side not the code it couldn't call that opening i further to fix it but you know what okay before we go further you can see that the prompt contains all the schema of the of the table plus the questions but you know what what i'm gonna do i waited for a couple of minutes to maybe go over that limit of call and i want to submit this question again end to end so i just clicked on run and you can see my question is there on the top so let's see how this time it kind of works so i'm gonna pause recording and when all of that is done, I'm going to show you if this time worked or it failed again. There you go. I ran it again and I asked the same question, predicting revenue for the next six months. It generated the code and you can see it is using Arima to feed a model over my data. Of course, I could ask like to split it for train test and stuff. You can be more specific here. I just use one of the questions that comes with the template. And not only it showed me the historical revenue, but also it answered me some questions about the, the predictions, sorry, the predicted revenue based on the question that we asked on the top. So give it a try. I would say that's a great starter. Again, you can customize it further and save a ton of time to do some quick analysis. I haven't personally tried that much to say how much it can do some advanced analytics like this is more, probably the most interesting question available in, the, in their examples. But try to be creative, connect it to your own SQL database, and see how much you can go further. Although you might see some limitations, as you, as you just saw, I ran it once, it failed, and the second time it works, and I'm still really not sure how, for example, that prediction is accurate. I have to ask, hey, do some test, further analysis based on historical data. Tell me, for example, how accurate the model is. So I haven't tried, you can give it a try, but at least I found something great to start for you. And I was thinking it's certainly worth to, to echo what is available, give it a try, and it will hopefully push you to uh, further steps. I hope you enjoyed this video. As always, I would love to have your comments and feedback in the comment section of the video. So I would be happy to reply to them all and even giving me an idea of what you want to hear, hear further for upcoming contents. Thank you all. Accept the pain. Embrace the pain. Smile at the pain. Pain is the gatekeeper of your destiny. Pain is there to just ask you one simple question, which is, are you really looking for achieving your goals or you're just a talker? So dream big, my friends, believe in yourself and take action. Till next video, take